<laughs> you know, Steve, and I, and I love that too. And as you mentioned, it's a collective, right? So as one thing I've noticed, and I think you and I've noticed because we work together and we're enabling our customers, right? On that journey, especially catalog, that's the importance, right? More and more customers and more and more organizations, I feel, have now realized the value of governance. They realize the value data quality. They realize the value of profiling, right? Do you see that being true or do you see that there's that still a hesitation for organizations? And just curious from your thoughts, what's blocking them or what's stopping them to keep moving forward to progress with this? From your money. thoughts. <laughs> Cha -ching. Time, Cha -ching, time and money, it's expensive. Uh, well, honestly, there, there's some truth to that, right? So a lot of times, okay. uh, well, first, a lot of companies won't react until they need to. So something like a compliance issue, like CCPA, GDPR, a lot of folks are just going to be, I'm hanging out, I'm not going to do anything until I see somebody else get fined, and then we'll do what they did and fix it. So a lot of the times that, that it's definitely is a compelling event that's missing, right? So that compelling event just hasn't happened yet. And a lot of companies don't really see a value in data governance. They can't put a price tag on it. The ones that are, are, are benefiting tremendously because you can see, I know there's a Especially in your, in your patch, right? We've seen big companies address not just the word data governance, but just the, 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 the purely of finding something, trusting it and using it. That's my three words, right? The three superpowers of the data governance uh, superhero are find, trust, and use, right? So finding data, trusting it, and using it is uh that's the million dollar answer right there if you can find it if you can trust it you can use it you're going to be successful because data is an asset you know it's like uh you're gonna to have to help me out what's that little ball the little cube in the and the marble um that that the, the whole series is based around um the, the infinity this, stones the tesseract so, you tell that's me. it yeah tesseract is that it the t whatever it is right oh, yeah, tesseract, good. The, tesseract. So the, the thing that uh, <laughs> iron man has to find and, 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 and save the world that is your data, right? That's the soup, that's it. Without that piece, every company will fail, period. If your data is not, if you're not taking care of your data and you're not making sure that your data is safe and you can't find it and you can't trust it, you will fail just like the test rack, right? If you can't find it, it's no, no use to anybody. You don't want to get into the wrong hands, right? Yeah. <laughs> As we, I think, as the movie showed us, right? Uh, yep. We don't want to get that into the wrong hands, and that's all about data governance. So your data is is like that. That that is it's the it's the cornerstone to the, the lifeblood of any company, and, and the successful ones have recognized like number one, how do we take more advantage of it? And number two is we have to make sure nobody else gets it that shouldn't get it. And that's all different. They're very specific paths of data governance and they they require different skill sets they require different technologies but they're all they're all part of the you know the term we call data governance yeah and steve i agree with you too i love the analogy proactive and reactive right, right. so I, I feel like the companies that are data driven are more proactive right they're not right. waiting for the compliance they're not waiting to be fine those are the companies that want to make change those are the leaders and the data world too. Oh, yeah. yeah, so I love how you bring that up. Yep. Oh yeah, yeah. That's important because a lot of the times, you know, the, 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 and you, we work together and you always ask me, so what do I ask a customer? What do I start, what do I do? It's a big thing. I said, it's really quite simple. How long does it take you to find something? And I remember your response was like, and you're an expert? You're, <laughs> that's, your, that's, your, that's your expert advice is to ask them how long it takes them to find something? I'm like, yeah, how long does it take? Ask the business analyst. How long does it take them when they're asked a question? How long does it take them to get the answer? And not only find the answer, but to verify that it's truthful, that you can trust it. And then how long after that can you actually produce something out of it, use it, right? That's the time. I mean, there's all these studies uh, about how long it takes people to do this. And it's 70 to 80% of the time for every question asked is spent just looking for data. It's not actually answering the, or doing the analysis, right? Only 20% of the time is the analysis. 70, 80% is finding it, prepping it, delivering it, and, and trusting it, or even knowing what something means. I mean, honestly, uh, one of the biggest things is not only finding something, but what does it mean? You know, if I, if I were, you're looking at a report, 
what does this column mean? What does revenue mean? What, is, what does this mean? What does Tesseract mean? If you're, imagine if Marvel had, a, had their own data catalog, right? These guys, would have, there would have been like four movies that were not been eating. They would have known, oh, we know exactly where it is. We have data lineage, right? Because you get lineage to find out where it was. Oh, this is easy. We don't need anybody else to help us, right? So like data, data, the data catalog itself is that, that magic, you know, that, that magic linchpin that holds everything together and that, that reduces the time to value and that produces, you know, making that data as an asset, as a, as a real valuable asset. Yeah, truly agree too, uh, Steve, with you on that. And, and to your point, it's, it's, it's just that simple. To your point, asking them the question, right? It's, but companies need to realize the value of that simplicity, understanding the data, to your point. I love the analogy. It could be one thing or another to another person, right? So, and I know you don't, I, I know you don't know anime. I love the Marvel, but like my shirt, this is Dragon Ball Z. This is anime, but there are some people will call Goku or Kakarot, two different names, same person. But I love that analogy. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's a catalog. That's, that, leads you, that leads me to another pillar of strength of, you know, of the catalog. You know, if you were looking at the Teen Titans of catalog, there's four different, there's really four different pieces that all do four different things. You know, you have that, that the glossary itself. Your point's perfect. Like I'm, I, I'm a customer, I'm, I'm in business and I have a, three different divisions within my company. They might all define supplier differently. They might all define customer differently. They might define a region or, or anything, anything for that matter. And without that, you're going to fail. I mean, I hate, I say that to customers that you will ultimately fail unless you have an enterprise wide agreed set of terms. And, yep. they, they, and, and then you, you, you get them in an exercise where you can, like you said, you can get three people in a room, three or four people in a room. And I don't have to say a word. You just ask them to define something. Go to their website and define something, and you'll get four different answers. And you just sit back and let them. You let them argue about it, and then they say, you know, if you had a catalog, <laughs> you wouldn't be arguing about it, right? So yeah. that's that's perfect analogy. Yep. 